Up next, we're going to discover what's new as I review not one, but two releases from a couple of the biggest names in CCM. Stephen Curtis Chapman, a CCM household name for 35 years, and Mercy Me, just over 20 years after releasing I Can Only Imagine, a song you may be familiar with, coming up on Andrew's Journey in Christian Contemporary Music. Welcome to Andrew's Journey in Christian Contemporary Music, where we dive into the classics, discover what's new, and demonstrate the originals. If you're into all things Christian Contemporary Music, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're liking what you see in today's episode, to give it a thumbs up. Climb aboard, let's do the CCM journey together. And before I get started, I just want to mention that I've created a Spotify playlist called Discover What's New. In it are the albums that I've featured in previous Discover What's New episodes, and will also include the albums I'm discussing today. The link to the Discover What's New playlist are in the description below. As I said off the top, I'm going to review the latest from both Stephen Curtis Chapman and Mercy Me. So since I'm doing two this time, I thought what I'd do is just give more of a summary of these albums, highlighting some of the things, or at least giving some of the highlights to me, instead of going through track by track, just to save a little bit of time. And also, even though I have history with both these artists, I'm not going to go deep into any of their other albums or the discography. I'll save that maybe for another time. We're just going to concentrate on these new albums that uh, they've brought out in the last few weeks. And I'm guessing that most of you who are watching this probably know who Stephen Curtis Chapman and Mercy Me are. So let's get to it. So let's look at Stephen Curtis Chapman's new release, Still. Still came out on October 14th, 12 tracks, just over 43 minutes long. When I listened to it the first time, I right away thought, yeah, That's Stephen Curtis Chapman. There's nothing groundbreaking musically on this album, though I often hear little things on certain songs where I kind of go, I like that. But for me, after several listens of this album, I realize that it's all about Stephen's lyric and melody writing, and his voice. He's still got it. He turns 60 later this month. The album starts off with the under two-minute intro song, Welcome back to Wonder. It builds to an epic wall of sound. I love how the acoustic guitar stays prominent in the mix. Something that Stephen is well known for, his acoustic guitar playing. It comes back down right at the end with a short stop before moving right in to the title track. I purposely didn't read any reviews on these albums, but I did watch a brief interview with Stephen. He mentioned that the songs he writes are from pages right out of his journal. And the title track has that journal feel. I could quote a lot of lyrics off this album, but I'll limit it to just this song and some off of one other. Here's the first verse. The sky was clear, Kentucky blue. It led me high up the mountain to show me the view and said, wherever this journey takes you, just trust me, I'm already there. I had no way of knowing then just how hard the rain would fall and how fierce would be the wind. It's been beautiful and terrible, more painful, more wonderful than I ever could have known. But even so, still I'm going to sing about the one who's given life to me. Oh, his love is unchanging. His grace is amazing. Still, I'm going to praise the only one who always stays the same. Oh, I know he is good. I know he is faithful still. And then on to verse 2. Oh, uh, sorry, don't get me wrong. I'm still a mess. And I've still got a heart with doubts and fears pounding in my chest. And I've wrestled and I've rested and I've trusted. Then I've tested God's patience like a foolish man. When I surrender once again... And I come like a little child reaching out my hands. He lifts me every time 
and tells me he loves me. Then, after the second chorus, Stephen breaks into a bridge declaring God's faithfulness. If you know the story of the Chapman family, specifically the tragic loss of their adopted daughter, you can really appreciate the mountain and valley experiences that he's singing about here, but still sings of God's faithfulness through it all. Moving on, he goes from a personal song to a song of encouragement to us in Don't Lose Heart. From there, he moves to the first single that was released back in the summer, I'm Alive. I was really excited to see that he had his two sons on this song and throughout the rest of the album. A run of upbeat and mid-paced songs follow, Kindness, Running After You, and Unfixables. But for me, the album really shines as Stephen brings the pace down. One of the the highlights to me is the simple, short, just over three minutes, but powerful song, Love Now. A quick little piano intro leads to Stephen singing about someone he knew who was ill, that they were all praying for his healing, only to have God take this person home. As the title would suggest, the song is all about loving now because we never know how much time we or others have left. The chorus is probably my favorite melody vocal from Stephen. Just beautiful. Where Else Could I Go has a little 80s flavor with a familiar 80s sounding synth sound. After that, after the song A Desperate Benediction, Peace on Earth, comes another highlight for me. The song is Living Color. Stephen tells the story <clears throat> of a 7th grade best friend, Carlton Bell who was black. Carlton moved away and they lost touch, but Stephen, years later, tracked down where he ended up, having died in 2016. In the last verse, Stephen tells of the hesitation of writing and singing this song, but felt was important to share their story. The verse goes, while I know these things are all way more complicated, So much is so broken beyond fixing it can seem. And if I'm honest, I'm scared to even write and sing this song. I don't want to somehow say the wrong thing. But I was thinking maybe if I told our story, maybe I could help someone remember and believe. There's a lot of goodness and wonder left in this broken world, just like there was back then for Carlton and me. And his skin was black and my skin was white, and the sky was blue, and our future was bright, and the blood ran red in both our veins, and we were looking at the world in living color. The final track is the very fitting Trying to Get Back Home, a song that builds complete with a choir of voices, a perfect closer. Thank you, Stephen, for still sharing your stories and heart with us. That's the album, Still. And now for the new release from Mercy Me, Always Only Jesus. It was released on October 21st, 10 tracks, just over 39 minutes in length. I should have spotted the clue right away in the title of this album. In no other studio album of Mercy Me is the name God or Jesus in the album title, And I don't think they just gave the album this name because there is a song on the album that bears the title. No, this is about as close to an all-out worship album you're going to get from Mercy Me. Yes, all their other albums contain at least one worship song and other worshipful or inspirational songs. But overall, their prior releases often have a variety of songs. That is my personal preference for Mercy Me. And I've thought that the variety formula has often worked for them. I've listened to Always Only Jesus a number of times. And although it has some good modern worship songs, I really had a tough time latching on to it as compared with many of their other releases. The opening track, Hands Up, is about as fun as it gets on this album. Although it is no shake or happy dance some of those fun songs of the past. It fits in the context of worship as a praise song. 
The next two songs are the least worship-like, more songs of encouragement, I guess you could say. Better Days Coming and Forgivable. Sorry, Forgivable. <laughs> the former has the flavor of recent songs from a few CCM artists, where the latter is more straight-up Mercy Me, with a great bass line from Nathan Cochran. The rest of the album is pretty much all praise and worship. The title track has a well-written, catchy melody, especially in the chorus and powerful bridge, in the, done in the same vein as many current worship song bridges. Bart Millard's best vocal comes out in the last chorus as he belts it out like only Bart can. Heartbeats for Your Good is one of my favorites on this album. Here's a lyric. Looking for a place to hide, not a lot of fight left in me. Who am I to even try? I can barely get to my feet. Still you, you stay beside me, showing me that all my strength comes when I am down on my knees. I may never know the answers to how you work, yet you always do. Your heart beats for my good, so my heart beats for your good. Even when the storm is raging through, in the middle of it all you prove, your heart beats for my good, so my heart beats for your good. And later in the bridge, it's gonna be, it's gonna be worth it. Because everything, everything's working for your good, for your good. Grace Amazing has traditional hymn-like verses with a more modern chorus. I'm glad to hear that some of the songs like Grace Amazing has more acoustic sounding drums in it, less drum sampling, and the guitars have some interesting nuanced parts throughout this release. The final and longest track, at just under five minutes, Nothing But the Blood, presents a new take on the classic hymn Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Musically more ethereal and dreamy than one might expect, it finishes the album of mostly worship songs very well. After a couple of recent more lively albums in the albums Lifer and Inhale, Exhale, you can't fault Mercy Me for taking a turn and putting something out with a little bit more of a worship tone to it. But I would love to hear from you. If you've listened to Still by Stephen Curtis Chapman and Always Only Jesus from Mercy Me, let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't heard them yet, check them out. How do these albums compare with others in their respective catalogs? Well, that's all I've got for today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. We'll see you next time on Andrew's Journey in Christian Contemporary Music. So long, God bless, and bye for now.